குரு பிரம்மா குரு விஷ்ணு குரு தேவோ மகேஸ்வரக குரு சாட்சாத் பரபிரம்மம் தஸ்மை ஸ்ரீ குருவே நம ஓம் சகனாவது சகனோபுனத்து சக வீரியம் கரவாவகை தேஜஸ்வினா நவீதமஸ்துமாத்மசாபதி ஓம் சாந்தி Namaskaram. I have sent you uh, a PDF file. I hope everybody got it. So I don't need to share it if you have it in front of you. Otherwise, I'll share it. You can see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, before we go into the Tattu Bodha text proper, so let me just give you a brief introduction to this. so we have gone through this is not the first time you are talking about vedanta because from the very first session we started with what the vedanta calls as the first baby step into the agni vidya because as we are running around in the world the teacher of vedanta stops you and say where are you going what is your purpose don't you know that you are a very special breed you are not an animal you have a free will you can have a goal in fact you are the only one who can have a goal so that purushartham is the first word in vedanta we are going to go by padarthas only every padam every word is good enough to reveal the potential act so the purushartham is what we discussed and the purushartham led to a parama purushartham which we call it moksha so we also refined the meaning of the word moksha to mean a sort of fulfillment you know in your mind to be fulfilled forever how how that is possible to be fulfilled in the mind So I just give an example. For example, we had a we had a Radha Kalyanam last year, so we all prepared for it, and many of us volunteers worked. Everybody is so stressed up, and the day came, and it was all going very well. And on that day, there are issues. The mic's not working, or food is not ready. But if you ask the serious, committed volunteers or the trustees, is this little problems bother them because in the deep heart the raja kalyanam is now happening the effort of one year is come to fruition you see the difference there is a deep mind in all of us that we have there is now the layer of the mind so do not think when you go to vedanta understand vedanta you will never have any problems in life problems will come but they'll be handled by the surface level of your mind but deep down you have no pressure that is moksha if you can deal everything in life with that kind of a tranquility in approach that is moksha moksha is not dying and going somewhere else so if you look at that way when do you should when you should have the moksha sadhana not when you are retired when your body is aching your hearing is poor seeing is poor no your life is already gone it should be when you are very young for somehow it have been concocted so that people are running away from vedanta and moksha as if it is some sort of a renunciating mantras and take away from the family life no it is not so for us the parama purushartham moksha is to have the entirely fulfilled at all the time so we all need that so we gone through that and we understood several of it and we come down to ganti pad which is the entrance to the vedanta and today we will take tattva bodha see why should what is why should we read tattva bodha i know balaji has sent the other script out of the meaning so if i 
deviate from this, forgive me. So what I like to understand is that in anything we do, we must ask for the prayer. What is the relevance of this Tattva Bodha text I should do? I've gone through this phase. I got this 10, 11 sessions, which seems to be a little bit logical to me. I want to explore it. There is something called a moksha. So is this the text going to give me that? What is that? Can I not just go to the temple, do the pujas? Can I not do things like, just now I think there is a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a good spirit, I think Balaji was saying, that there is no difference between karma, jnana and all this. Absolutely there is no difference. But if you go deep down, there is a sequence. The difference is not there. Everything leads to the same goal. But there's a sequence. Like now you eat the sambar rice and then come to the curd rice. So you have to prepare your mind, the instrument, which is the most subtlest instrument, the gift that you got, that you need to use it to clean it up. To clean up, you need the karma yoga. If the sadhanas are perfect, then sadhim is perfect. So the discipline of Vedanta therefore says a karma yoga should be done as a first step. And I say first doesn't mean it's going to end. It's going to be a perpetual step. But this will change into jnana by itself. becomes a jnana yoga. That way, I think that's, that's all you should understand what just now was said. There are some arguments about I am following bhakti, I am following karma, jnana. That is not right. Bhakti is underlying for everything. When you do the job, you do the devotion. When you do jnana, you do the devotion. Bhakti is not at all a path. It is the nature of yourself. You don't have bhakti, you have nothing. That's so one of the reasons why Bhagavan Shankara, having done the Advaitic philosophy, the ultimate doctrine, still writes the slogas. Don't involve bhakti into this. Bhakti is always given. You must have it. Then your prayatnam is therefore on the karma and jnana. Therefore, when we read this Tattva Bhata, other jnana grandas, it is not preempting that what you should be otherwise doing. The karma yoga has to be done. Some of us may be qualified already, but like me, many of them still not qualified. Therefore, we learning the jnana yoga only to understand that I will be one day practicing that. See, otherwise, you know, there is a, there's a, first there is Aditya Chaduru Vedan Dharma Sastran You would have done all this Chadu Vedam, you would have, Sastran you would have all studied. But if you Brahmatvam na jhanati, if you do not know the Brahma Jnanam, Atma Jnanam, Darbim Pakarasam Yata. Pakarasam means, you know, when you're cooking, if you put a spoon there, ladle, and the cook, it is, it is making halva, keshari, and all the fantastic sweet it is making, the ladle, the spoon. Does it taste anything? It does not. That's so one. If you, you can read all the Vedas, you can do all the Adhyayana. You may, you may by heart say all these mantras. But if you are not tasted the Atma Jnanam, it is like a spoon. So that's the reason why I say when we take this um, Tattva Bhota, we take it to a view that we are going to get into a text proper. It's called Prakarana Granta. See, in the Vedanta, in all this, in Vedanta also as sub schools like Shankara, this Ramanuja, Madhvas, a lot of, lot of scholars have given a different interpretation of it, but all of them agree to the important pramana that there are three pramanas are prasthana triya. Prasthana means generally the path. Prasthana means the root or you can say source. There are three prasthanas, the three roots, three sources to teach Vedanta. The first one is called Shruti prasthana. Shruti means Vedas but here it means Upanishads. The Shruti Prasthana means Upanishad are the sources for Vedanta. That would mean 
we all should be reading Upanishads. But they are so esoteric in nature, paradoxical in the language. Even a very great Sanskrit scholar cannot understand it because it is not a poetry. It's an expression of emotions, experience of Paramagurus. So it is not a literal literature to read. It's a tattva jnanam, so therefore you need to have certain maturity to do that. The second one is called Shruti Prasthan. Sorry, Smriti Prasthan. Smriti is that which is remembered and reverberated. Bhagavad Gita is a very special Smriti. It's called a Smriti Prasthan. So therefore, whatever that you have to learn from Upanishad, don't worry, you can learn from Bhagavad Gita. In a very light way, I say this one, I can never forget this uh, incident. Several years back, I was in Rishikesh, um, and this is a big Gita Bhavan book stall is there. Um, so it is Gita Press makes a lot of Gita books in many languages. Um, I was looking for an Upanishad book, I want to book a particular Upanishad book, and uh, I, I, I seldom control my temptation to buy books. But I was just uh, pushing very hard, and uh, the lady was searching around. And uh, one old man, very simple looking man, which is, must be one of the salesmen, he came to me and said, uh, Buy sir, which Upanishad are you looking for? I said, Such and such. Why are you struggling for all these things? Everything is there in Gita. So you don't need to read all this individually, it's all there. I just saw him as the Shakshat Parabrahmanda. You see, Sometimes you want to have to satisfy your ego, you want to learn more. There's nothing to, nothing to learn. Everything is there in one. So Bhagavad Gita is one, which is the Prasthan thread, second part. But Bhagavad Gita is given in a context of a man, a, a noble man who is delusioned and he needs to recover from this war. Therefore, it gives the whole lifestyle, life sciences all mixed together. So it is basically not just a Vedanta, it is just Veda Sar, it is. Karmadanta is there, Bhakti is there. Therefore, for those selective readers who want to understand Brahma Vidya, again, you need a guru, Sadguru, who can teach you know, any normal looking word in Bhagavad Gita will have so many different meanings. Vidya, Atma Vidyana, just now in, in chapter 10 period, it's the noblest of science that you need to read. I mean to understand where it is. So the third prasthanatrayam is called Nyaya Prasthanatrayam. So, Nyaya, it is done by Veda Vyasa himself. He took the Upanishads. Remember that Veda Vyasa wrote the Bhagavad Gita. The whole Mahabharata was written to reveal the Bhagavad Gita. So he already given having asked his disciple Jaimini to write Mimamsa Bhasha, Adhatha O Dharma Jingyahasa, he started this writing it. Bhagavad Gita has been done, Mahabharata, for everybody to understand. Then he took upon himself the impossible task of explaining to people what is Atma Vidya or Brahma Vidya. And that he did in a thing called Brahma Sutra. Sutra means something which compact, which gives you everything in a very short assembly of letters and words. So these three are called Prasthanatrayam and the Vedantic schools take those three in good fight as a pramana and then they infer. I just wanted to clarify, Nyaya Prasthan, Nyaya means, it's not a Nyaya, Vaisheshika Nyaya. Nyaya means logic. But logic is tarka, but not this Vidanda, uh, Madam, Jilpa, all this that just now you heard. Here, Nyaya is used to understand the truth. See, you can use logic, argument to discredit something else. That's also logic. But you also have to give logic to understand something. You understand? So the whole Nyaya, nyaya Prasthana is basically how to understand the Upanishads are. 
But again, all these are a little bit esoteric in nature. So it needs to have some interpretation because they are in a very difficult language. And therefore, for that, Prakrana Grandams. Grandam means a book. Prakranam means that which is well done. Small books, but they are topical in nature. Topical in nature means you take just one part. Okay, now in the last session you concluded with the with the nobility of the sound ah. Now, if the teacher comes back next class, they're researching about the sound ah uh, and give you a lecture on it, it is a prakranakanda. Take a topic. It's basically a paribaksha. Paribaksha is technical terms. That's the reason I was insisting, you know, I'm gonna give you the quiz and everything. Know the terms, use the terms. So in Tatsubhota, it is going to be introducing the important terms of it. Now, when you read a good book, you look at the ordinary textbook, especially, you look at the index and see what are the lessons. And what, what they are. Then you go back to the last page, quantum physics. What is quantum physics? It gives you a few lines. Okay, this is quantum physics. Then I will go on and understand it. So this kind of a brevity in soul, but very depth in the understanding is called Tatsubhadra. And I would like you to, uh, it's not take a long time to introduce, but I think it's important that you, you, you get the right mode of it. Also, when you learn this kind of uh, any any learning, in my opinion, I would say that's all I learned from my teacher. Any learning is to be done in stages, and uh, Jnana Yoga is all about the stages. The Jnana Yoga is not just applied to the Atma Vidya, even to the practical life. The three stages: Shravanam, Mananam, Vidyasi. Shravanam means hearing, listening, actively listening. You know, in any any context in life, whether in a college or a school, or in a very tough negotiation in the, in, in the office, <coughs> with your staff, by you showing active listening, you already win the argument. Your presence is there. And it has to be in such a way, there is no pradibhasikam in this. Do you remember the word pradibhasikam we talked about in the last session? There is no apparent perception, Brahma is not there. So there's a very simple technique for this. Simple technique is, you come completely bare, meaning mentally bare. Just ignore, drop everything that you know. Like when you go to the temple, you remove the shoes, and then when you go to this, sessions of classes where they teach Adhyatmi Vidya, remove all that you know. It is not to say that teacher can get away with something wrong, no. Teacher may say whatever limited that he knows, but your task is to absorb exactly what it is. It may be wrong, doesn't matter, but you have to absorb that everything into you. If you do not do that, if you are starting mananam, that means you're already contemplating, thinking your thought, he is saying this, I know this, this is not correct, then you already missed what you were saying. So that's the reason why you may have a couple of other books, you would have read it, you would have gone through it. But in this session, it will be useful for you to keep all that in the back burner, listen, then you go and do manana. The first is stravana. You're listening. You get the fact, exactly what it is, without bad emotions. Sadda guna pradhanam. The mind is very agitated or maybe it's, um, Raj is thinking I haven't responded to his call and he's worried about my poor response. Then he's thinking about that, for example. So all these emotions will be colored. So you unclutter everything, then it just, like a fire it catches. Any subject you can learn, any language you can learn, any, any difficult topic you can understand, because you are absolutely giving yourself to this. 
Then you take your mananam and you you ask questions. But Vedantam is asked about questions. I just take one small point. For example, the last session, I, I do get some questions people write to me sometime um, because we don't have time and to answer that in the session. And I try to bring those answers to the subsequent talk so that it answers coming through. So one example is the, um, I think Sri Muthikeshi asked the question, you know, the Pradibhasikam, we talked about it. Yavakarikam, we talked about it. It's very relevant to what we're going to discuss now. Yavakarika Sattva means your day-to-day -day transactional reality. You see me, I see you. You hear me, I hear you. Everything's happening. This is this is for us real. This is called Vyavakarya Sattva. Pradibhashka Sattva means imaginary things. Seeing a snake in a rope or, or assuming some opinion about somebody, being judgmental about somebody without having a fact. It's called Pradibha, Pradibhashka. So uh, in the last session, I did not conclude very well. I did say the Pradibhasikam means keeping a known thing on a known thing. Thanks to Muthu for raising this one. So in a snake, you know, a rope, you know. In the dark, you see the rope on a snake. You know water, you see mirage, and you see the water in the mirage. You know silver, you know the shell, you see silver in a shell. A known thing or a known thing. I know, I know Balaji, I have opinion about Balaji, so I impose my opinion on Balaji. All this is called Pradipasikam, a known step on a known step. In the Vyavakarikam, we can do both known and unknown. Is it not? I do not know Mars, but Mars exists, I know, I believe that. So the question was, known I understand, so I see you, you see me, objects are there. Unknown I understand because Agnyeda, so I do not know, but it exists, but I know by Anumana Pramana it exists. But known, unknown can be known, unknown, and unknown, unknown. That was the question he asked. Don't need to worry about that. Because it is true, there's a known unknown, which means I know I do not know. Unknown unknown, I don't even know that I do not know. It is of no value right now. But what I missed to tell you last time, this will put some clarity into this. The Pradibhasikam, Pradibhasikam, the apparent Brahma, that world, that's that reality is created by you and me. The dream is created by you. The opinion is created by you. The wrong perception is by you. So if you live in a wrong perception, that world of Pradibhashka Sattva, you are the Shishti Gatta. Don't blame anybody else. It is you. So you are the Brahman. You create that world. That's why that world get negated. That is not available to anybody else. It's your own world. And we want to go away from that Pradipasika. Yava Pradipa world is not created by you. It's created by Ishvara. <coughs> more matter into this, more subject into this, more material into this. <coughs> Ishvara is a lot more powerful. So he creates things to give a better reality than the uh, <coughs> reality. So Vyavakarika Srishti, the world is a Vyavakarika Srishti, is by the Supreme Power, Ishwara. We do not we do not know Ishwara who he is, who she is. Let us assume that one. It exists in real. So there are two Srishtis there, Vyavakarika Srishti and the Pradibhasika Srishti. Then I said the last one is Paramarthika Srishti, Paramarthika Satya. In the Vyavakarika, known and unknown, known and known, the, sorry, the Pradibhasika, known, unknown, 
on the Vyavagarika, both known and unknown are imposed. Paramartika, beyond known, beyond unknown, unknowable. Is there anything that's called unknowable? I can understand, I don't know. But if I know it, it becomes knowable. If it is unknowable, is it not unknown? It's, sorry, English is very poor in this. Unknown is something which is an object which is unknown. It's already imply an object is unknown. Unknowable. It's not even objectified. It's unknowable. It's beyond my competence, beyond anybody's competence. How do you, what is the proof? Is there anything like this? I just know I said unknown, unknown, I don't need to know. I can just discard it like, just like that. But I can't discard unknowable. Why? You will discuss in detail, but very quick answer to this is the unknowable is that in which you know everything else. The knower in you, that which knows in you is not knowable. Just take a minute to think. I, I know this computer. I know uh, this person. So the object is, the premium is what is known. It is known. I do not know Marx. So Marx is unknown. But who is saying I know, I do not know? I say it. Who is this I? Can he know this knower? If I suppose, go logically, I know this knower because I somebody bisects me, give me anatomy, give me my physiological profile, everything. Do I know? I know. Because the moment I know me, I become a known object. That means somebody is knowing this known object. Enough to spin your head, right? Therefore, the Paramatya Satya is where it's beyond knowable and unknowable, but it cannot be discarded like unknown, 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 or known, unknown, because it is very much you, not even your part of you. It is you, it is I. Are, how can then I not know this one? But I can't know it. But I can't say I can't know it. I know it. So the in in, in Ken Obishma says, if you say you know it, you do not know it. If you say you do not know it, you know it. This paradoxical language, when you take a dictionary and translate, it will be confusing to you. Bhagavan says in, in Bhagavad Gita, when everybody is asleep, I am awake. When everybody is awake, I am sleeping. You think that is a, you know, a kind of a wrong job, maybe a wrong shift. No. It's all paradoxical languages where you need to understand. That's the reason why I'm saying the manana is important. Ask questions, think about it. If I do not know, many, many I would not know. We will learn it together. But doing the shravanam. So let us go into the text proper. proper. So if you have it, you can see it. Otherwise, you can see it on the screen. Let me just say a few words on the on the name itself. There are two words combined together. Bodha means there's lots of meaning in Sanskrit. I will be giving contextual meaning where there's a difference. I will explain that one. Bodha is Bodha is here, jnana, knowledge. Tattva. Tattvam generally don't do philosophy. It's not philosophy. In fact, in Vedanta is not a philosophy. Vedanta is truth. Sorry. But that, the Padam that denotes the Parabrahma, the truth. 
the prefix thwam. The thwam has got different meaning. Thwam means uh, the, at, the attributes, the character, the guna. See, for example, Buddha thwam, Manusha thwam, Brahma thwam, something thwam. So, Manusha thwam means about humanity. So, Tada Tvam. Tada Tat is the truth, God, or the eternal truth. Paramatika Satta Tvam. So, therefore, this Grandha is going to tell about the knowledge about that Brahman. What is the prayogenum of this? Again, you go back to the same word. The thwam has got another meaning in Sanskrit. It's you, second person, singular. So tadu is that at Brahman. Thwam is you. Tadu, thwam, you are that. That bodham is also going to come from this, which means this Grandham should give me the facts about, knowledge about <coughs> Paramatika Sattva, <coughs> knowing it properly, the benefit of that would be, magically, I myself become that Paramatika Sattva, which means I must know, I would be knowing myself, but I can't say I know myself because I am not knowable. That's why I keep quiet. That's why the great jnanis keep quiet. There's nothing to say. <clears throat> so I know this is the this is going to be an Advaita Param. So some of us may have a different schools of thought. Don't worry about that. See, notably Ramanuja and Shankara have slightly different view in interpreting the Tattva Masi Mahavakyas. And the many scholars have thought about it. And even today, and there are many, many groups fighting about this. But we will stay away from them because they missed the point. You know, like uh, the father would say, look, if you go and do the exams well and get the first mark in the class, I'll be your PS2. Otherwise, nothing will be given to you. That's the thing. He tells his wife, don't give him anything. He must do well in exams. But mom keep putting chocolate bars in his bag, apple in his bag, without the father knowing it. See, both are important. If you look at the Paramana Bhuti, but I understand everything, I know that is me, and if I realize this one, Ekam Shatyam, I am an Advaita Anuputi. If you say that is the getting first class mark in the class, for example. So one teacher, my father is telling me that or nothing. But to go that, the child has to study, he has to work hard, he has motivation. To do the motivation, you need to take through by hand holding it. Don't go, don't worry about that. Your step is to study this. Be a good boy. Do the homework. Attend to the classes. Go to the exam. Sharpen your pencil. Write the exams well. Then you'll get this one. This is where I think the, the variations of Advaitam giving you Bhakti, Anga, Angi, Sesha, there's so many different arguments given to you. <coughs> Therefore, it is like mother and the father taking you to give you the ultimate success and experience. Therefore, when I go through the Advaitic Param in this, keep that in mind. It is all enc encompassing one, not violating with any other Acharya's advice. First line, therefore, we say, Sri Shankara Bhagavad Pada Acharya Pranitaha. Pranitaha means established, embellished, done. So this is a, you know, there are a lot of 
ਪਾਠ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਵਿਵੇਕ ਚੜਾਮਨੀ ਆਤਮ ਬੋਧਾ ਆਤਮ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਪੇਦ ਸਾਰਾ ਵਾਕਿਯ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਲਗੂ ਵਾਕਿਯ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਮੈਨੀ ਮੈਨੀ ਆਫ ਦਮ ਮੈਨੀ ਡੂ ਨਾਟ ਨੋ ਹੂ ਰੋਟ ਆਲ ਦੋਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਸਮ ਸੇ ਸ਼ੰਕਰਾ ਵਿਚ ਦੇ ਆਰ 436 ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਵਰਕਸ ਆਨ ਸ਼ੰਕਰਾ some claim not everything is written by shankara how do we know that we do not know great mahatmas they write some wonderful grandas and they either because of humility or to reach a lot of people they put the authorship to bhagwan shankara they would done it we do not know but we take the mahatmas who teaches and they say shankara bhagwat padacharya need hai established so i can read you can read with me or you can read yourself in your mind the first one so i will probably say this uh, prayer for shankara first sadasiva samarambha sangracharya dhima asmadacharya paryanda vande guru parampara so we will include this prayer in the subsequent classes mangalacharanam mangal aacharanam aacharanam means etiquette discipline mangala means auspicious so in anything you start especially when writing a book you say in mangala acharanam why the mangala acharanam is done it is done to say look i have starting this yajnam this writing the book may i complete it successfully see i told you right bhakti is the fundamental stone so you cannot really avoid bhakti you can't write anything without devotion so he has written a mangala charanam to write this book the book is written now because it's evident book is already here and why do we still have to say the mangala charanam it is also for the readers may i understand it well because if you don't understand the book well text well what's the point of that the reason why mangala charanam is important to to read more than the palashruti mangala charanam is very important to read so let us just read this first one vasudevendra yogindram natva jnana pradam gurum mukshunam yidartaya tattva bodha abidiyate i think when you if you are muted please read with your mind because it's important to understand the words when you do the mangala charanam you worship your ishta devata your guru everybody see when you are in yang when you when you when the, you know even today if you go to i you know i i i i grew up in a place where i worship agilandeshwari every temple i go to even as muruga temple i'd say aglandeshwari first it comes to me naturally um, so like that shankara's ishta devata was vasudeva krishna so he is so he is he therefore also his guru's name is govinda so he therefore he prays to the ishta devata and also to the guru since so what do you say here you take the second word natva the twa suffix adds to a verb becomes yeah preposition having worshiped having adored having prayed pray to who vasudevendra yogindra vasudev vasu means vasu means the world vasudev is the lord of the world indra means leader indra is the one who leads devendra is one who leads deva gajendra means the king of elephants so devendra yogindra so bhagwan krishna is the lord of the world he is the lord of the gods he is the yogacharya so he prays to him then he also prays to his guru jnana pradam guru you can take the meaning that krishna is a guru or you can have it two different ways i prefer to take two ways he prays to the god and he prays to his guru 
ज्ञान प्रदम गुरु the guru who gives the gnanam then he says the next thing mumukshanu mumukshanu sorry mumukshunam hidarthaya tattva bodha abidiyate abidiyate means expound that explained elucidated illustrated expanded so what is he expanding it tattva bodham he is expanding tattva bodham to whom mukshana mukshuna see this is a, in also in the, the etiquette is that when you when you write a book even you know in, in, you teach in the in the presentation skills when you present something you tell who you are what you are going to present what is the purpose of presenting it and you make a presentation and even in conclude what you said what you said and it goes into the mind of the people so the same way here he is giving four important thing it's called anubandha sadushtayam anubandha means prelude or introduction chadushtayam chadushtayam means a group of four what are the four first thing is you must say what you are saying vishaya so here he is saying the vishaya is tattva bodha so the first one is vishaya second one is called adhikari adhikari is not one with the power adhikari is one has got a qualification yogyada siddhyatam one who is qualified is called adhikari so the second one should be the adhikari who is adhikari here mukshuna mukshu the word root mu has got several meaning one of the meaning is tayam time hold bind muhurtam is said mu mukshu is one who is wanting to be liberated become timeless who becomes beyond everything so for the mumuk for the mumuk shoes what's the what's the what's the use of him he says hida arthaya hidam means generally hidam means good giving nice well hida arthaya well good means so it is giving benefit to the mukshu in his pursuit so first is vishaya tattu bodha second is adhikari which is the mukshu third is the prayojanam idatta the fourth one is called sambandha relationship okay i am the adhikari i am the one want to know the uh, moksham yes tell me tattu bodha and what do you, what are you got to do with this the sambandham come from the last word abidhiyate by expanding it so the relationship is there is a tattu bodha is there i am going to expand on it so this beautifully the author has given in the same mangala charanam the anubandha chatushtayam as well mangala charanam talks about the guru and the god anubandha chatushtayam talks about adhikari vishaya sambandha priyojana now we go to the first one the text proper so it's called tattva vega prakaram prakaram means you know you saw you saw the temples you see prakarams it's a passage it's a way the right way in the proper way so what kind of thing you going to do in this grandha just to give you very overall summary so that you know what is coming it is it is a topological text is going to give you the context or meaning for the important technical terms so for it's going to first talk about the qualification for learning this then it is going to talk about what you are going to learn that for vivekam what it is so the tat part of it the reality part of it 
it is going to break into 24 tattvas. Why it is breaking? Because Viveka is breaking things. You're going to learn about that. Viveka is dissecting, discriminating, Pagutpariva in Tamil. So it is going to split into 24 tattvas. Or the part of the tattvas is going to talk about Sariratrayam, or bodies of three types, Pajendriyam, or Indriyams, or five different types of Indriyams, Panjakosham, or bodies in five different uh, envelopes. Then beyond all this, there's Atma Vicharam, who am I beyond this body? And the Avastas, what kind of avastha I go through? Panjabuddha Abhivyakti, how the world is formed. I go from the microcosm to microcosm, how the world is formed. Gunatra Yubhagam, how the characters define, the modality defines. The microcosm, macrocosm unification, under Pinda, Sambandha, how the atom is same as the whole cosmological bigness. By knowing all this, how I become a Jeevan Mukta. But I can't do all this very quickly because there are a lot of impediments in my life. And why is that? Then it comes about karma. It's because you are carrying a lot of burden on your shoulders. Unless you take out one after the other, you can't be free. So to take it out, it takes time and effort and some pain. That's so why even if you go to the Vedanta Shravanam and Vedanta uh, understanding of it, all your troubles are not going to go away just like that. I'm not telling the truth here. It will all go away just like that if you're prepared to let it go just like that. Subtle insight here. Your troubles will be there. Your karma vasanas will be there. The paratham will be there. The defeat. Injury people, he may be a jnana yogi, he may be a sati. Somebody will be still scold, scolding you, somebody will be abusing you. They will not go away, but you can be away from this. It's called Jeevan Mukti. But when I finish all this, what do I get? You get a Brahmananda. So you can see, even though it's a very small text of 58. Uh, Sentences, I say. It's not even verse. The first verse you finish, there's no more verse. Everything is prose. Very simple to read, very easy to understand. Even for the early Sanskrit students, it's much easier to understand this one. There are 58 sentences. I'm bringing this 15 different chapters. Therefore, it is in one sense a complete Vedanta, in another sense, it's a teaser. So we just see the first one today. We don't have much time, and then we take it from there. So we take the first verse. Sadhana sadhushtya sambhannadi karina mokshya sadhana bhutam mokshya sadhana bhutam tattva vivega prakaram vashyamaha sadhana sadhushtya sambhannadi karina Vashyamaha. Vashyamaha means Vadami. I am going to say, I am saying, I am going to say this. What I am going to say, Sadhana Chadushtaya Sambhannadi Karinam. Okay. I am going to say Tattva Viveka Prakara. I am going, going to talk about Tattva Viveka Prakara. I thought he's going to talk about Tattva Bodham. Now he said Tattva Vega Prakara. He's already giving you a clue. Tattva, the words are exactly there. And the Bodham he's replacing with the Vega Prakara. That Bodham is going to be given to you by using the Vivekam, by discrimination. You see the difference there? So the Jnanam is, what is Jnanam? Anything is jnana, yadartha jnana, after fact, prama. Jnana iti jnana. If we know 
Raja is talking, you know it. Therefore, jana iti jnanam. But now if you analyze, he is talking in front of a computer, he is doing that, all kind of stuff. Then you are analyzing it, discriminating it. It's called vivitya iti jana iti jnanam. Vega has. Vega means when you start applying discrimination. So here he is saying, Tattva Viveka Prakaram. He is going to teach Tattva Bodha by discriminating into number of Tattvas. What is the use of that one? It is Moksha Sadhana Dutam. Moksha Sadhana Dutam. Every word you must understand. Moksha you must understand. So you must explain what is Moksha. Sadhana Dutam means it's an it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a instrument. Sadhana. So you must know what is sadhana means. So the first phase says he's going to teach to who? To Nadigari. Nadigari means one who got the Yogita. What Yogita has got? Sadhana Chadushtaya Sambhannati. Sadhanam Chadushtayam Sambhannam. Here Sambhat means wealth. Once who's got the wealth, what wealth? Sadhana Chadushtaya. What is Sadhana? Chadushtaya, we already know. I'll already give you an example of Anupanda Chadushtana. Chadushtana means, Chadushtana means a group of four. So here the author is saying, he's going to teach this to someone who has got these four qualities, the Sadhanas. And in the Mangala Charnam, he said, Mukshanam, Mukshanam, Mukshunam. Mukshunam means what? One who is desiring for liberation. I don't know how many of us in this group is a Mukshu. I am not yet. To have that liberation desire, you should have a desire like, you know, your head is on the fire. See, when you, you achieve anything in life, like, like uh, Muhammad Ali said, the intensity of purpose should be so high that you are that at what you want to do. Then you become that. Otherwise, nothing is created. See, when you look at anything, there is an intellectual observation. You observe something, you intellectually see it. You bring your language, grammar, yagarnam, takram, analyze it. You see as an object of dissection. There's a distance between you and that. But when you go and look at an art or a fine music you are listening to, even sometimes music listeners analyze it too much sometime on Vichraga, Vitala. It's fine, it's, it's nice. But during the time of experience of it, to remove the distance between you and what we're enjoying it, you should lower the shutters of intellectual dissections. You don't, you don't, when you are giving a fantastic meal, you don't say, oh, this, this, you put 10 grams salt more, 300 grams sugar more. No, you don't. You just enjoy it. You become one with this one. The artistic observation, you go through that. So why I'm saying this? So I, we are not yet Mumukshu yet, but we are very much interested to know the knowledge about that, which is not. We are not, I, I don't think, at least I can say for myself, I'm not really now desperately looking to be get Moksha yet. I, I, I want to have the kind of a desire overtake me, but I'm definitely looking to learn what knowledge will drive me there. So I am not a mukshu yet. So the Mangala Charnam, the Adhikaratvam already said it is only for the mukshu. So what do I do now? Do I just politely walk away from this? No. The Mahapadiva said this should be replaced by Jignasu. Jignasu is one who is desire of knowledge, good knowledge. So we can say Vasudevita Yogindram 
நட்பா ஞான பிரதம் குரு ஜிஜாசு நாம் இதத்தாய தத்வ அபிதீயதே ஜிஜாசு நாம் மீன்ஸ் for those who are desirous of knowledge i am assuming now 100% all of us in this session are jigyasu otherwise why would you waste this wonderful sunday morning to come and listen to this because you wanted to learn so we are jigyasu it's very important to this is a great power we we got the knowledge this grace will not come unless there is a prarabdha punyam why should i have to listen to why these words have to come into your mind why should I think about asking a question all this is to come because there is a punya and like this like everything else will come and go like you no know, like some child may be singing beautifully in english the parents will be thinking oh she must be an ms subrakshmi next time or a beethoven he plays so well we go to the teacher and put him there year 3 year 4 year 5 not it became a very ordinary child lost everything else what happened the vasana showed that one if you have the punyam you have get hold of it so we are we are given we have punyam so we have this kind of a thirst for this knowledge we have to hold on to this therefore we can say jignasu na so we are the jignasu then there is a problem so what therefore is the adhikari who achieve the sadhanas because we are not the mumukshu the mumukshu has achieved this four sadhanas what are the sadhanas he is going to say we do not know yet the the poet is saying for the mumukshu who has got this four qualification i will teach we change it now for the jignasu can i say the next part of it this four qualification i can't say it why because this four qualification which are the means to the end is ourselves an end to us see i will just take 5 minutes before i close today Shankara gives a very beautiful definition for the world. You see, this is what I think we should do to sharpen our mind. Every time you take, you explain something in a paragraph. Try to explain in a sentence. Everything explain in a sentence, explain in a word. Your mind becomes sharper, your intellect becomes sharper, your vocabulary becomes sharper. So he says, "Sadhana sadhya swarupa." Each the world is nothing but sadhanas and sadhyas what is sadhana sadhana is an effort not any effort the effort put in to achieve a stated objective i am drinking coffee this morning but not a sadhana i'm sitting in this 10 to 12 class it's a sadhana why the sadhya means you want to understand achieve a knowledge therefore the relationship now between sadhana and sadhya is sadhana gives sadhya which means the sadhya must be given by the sadhana common sense but we miss it now my child from the from day one she was singing it's not a sadhya at least not in this birth it is a gift no i i got suddenly i got this gift somebody sent me or i got a lottery i won a prize is it a sadhya no there's no sadhana you put in there anugraha what what happens you is different every, every a dog gets his meal from anybody without any effort every one of us every living thing will have all the basic needs will be fulfilled 
without any effort. Somehow. Why? Because you know it's a very beautiful thing. One 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 Saudi told me how you all walk away from everything else and renunciate. You don't even know what is the next meal is going to be there. What do you do? How 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 do they? You know, you can say it's a vaida, game, power, whatever. But what is that? And that is, he said very beautifully, because if I have to die by hunger, which means my prarabdha karma is coming to end. If my prarabdha karma is going to end, no matter how I try, I will die. If the prarabdha karma is not going to end, I'm going to live. To live, I need to eat food. Why should I worry about it? The karma tatha, who is the who manages the prarabdha karma, will find me a food. You see the point? How profound! I'm not saying I'm not saying this to give an excuse not to do any work. I'm just talking about such enunciated people. Here, the shraddha. The approach they take is so strong. We are going to learn all this thing in, in a great detail in this one. So here, therefore, for us, therefore, the sadhana, sadhyam is not there yet. Say for the moksha, you need viveka. Moksha is a sadhyam. Viveka is a sadhana. But we don't even have viveka. That word Viveka is not a sadhana for us. Viveka is for us what? Sadhya. The word for us it is not a sadhana sadhushtayam. For us it is sadhya sadhushtayam. We need to achieve this four first. What are the four we will know? So therefore, don't need to worry about it because uh, this one is basically what called uh, all everything in the world um, is called the uh, sentences vakya. I can say it's bastu sankalka vyakya. That means every sentence has got uh, important object content loaded on it. If there is no unnecessary words. And also this disciple which is you and me, that this is going to be in a sambhashana, it's going to be a guru and teacher talking. I think that's the best form of teaching. It is proven in Upanishad, in, 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 in many, many grandas, in Bhagavad Gita. In my personal life also, I feel that uh, so writing a text and uh, preaching them, it is basically a question and answer, much better. So here is going to be a question and answer. The question is a teacher, but the students, they're all the students, he gets the okay. so he is going to get the smrana first, he's going to listen to what the teacher says, and then he will interject with the question. I can bet when you go through it, every time you read what the guru says, the first question that pops in your mind will be the most suitable question that Sushya will be asking the next. So therefore, you can park all your questions. The Sushya will be asking the question and the Guru will be teaching it. So we will go through it. So what I like to do, I would like to take through the first part a little bit um, in detail. There's no point, this, this text tells you what is Viveka, for example, what are the four sadhanas. But it does not tell you how to attain it, what the means of attaining it. Because it is thinking to the mokshu who already attained it. But they are jiggyasu. Therefore, I wanted to say a few words about what is that sadhana? How do we achieve this? How do we need to do to get that? And how do we ensure we preserve that? So therefore, there are only four instruments of knowledge he is talking about. Therefore, we'll understand in the next one or two classes what these four are. So we'll go step by step. 
as long as you are very strong footing on each steps the whole bandha will be much easier so i think i'll finish now i take in 8 minutes more thank you so shan 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 thank you raja so we will uh, finish with the normal uh, the upanishad from brother and upanishad om asato ma sadgamaya ಅಮೃತಂಗಮಯೃತಂಗಮಯೃತಂಗಮಯೇಶ thank you very much for uh, coming today and uh, you. meet next uh, sunday again same time yeah, thank yeah, you thanks thank raja you. again for sorting the thank new you, book very, very nicely and uh, with uh, yeah. concentration and full yeah. focus is it uh, is it too 